you know, Archana, one thing I wanted you to do was talk to, you know, Shaya. Uh, yes, Gomash. Regarding? Well, I want to know, is, is she, is that boy there, is she really going to marry that boy? That man? There was this one man from Poland or something, or Hungary, he was there, he told me he's going to marry her. Oh, uh, okay. So I want to know, is that on, is that still on, is she going to marry him? Mm, yes, Gumash, I can check on that. And I want to know, is she really serious about taking initiation? Mm. Uh, it seemed like that, Ramahash, because she been asking me a couple of times about it. And uh, with the man, I think they did the engagement last time, and the man went back to his country. Maybe he is coming back to marry her, like that. I'm not sure. Let me talk to her, and I will get back to you. Okay. You have to do it before this weekend. Okay, Ramahash. I will let you know by tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll begin. Om Magyana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubyasya Kripa Recording in progress. Patita Nam Pavanebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Pancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhaeva cha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo nama jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nichananda shri advaita gadhata shri vasadi gaur bhakta vanda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 Hare Hare. We're reading the Krishna book. This evening we're on chapter number 59, Bomasura, Bomasura delivered. So in the previous chapter we heard how Lord Krishna married five, five more wives. Right. Initially his first wife was Rukmini and then that was followed by Jambavati and then Satyabhama. Sat Satyabhama. And then we heard Krishna got these five wives. There was Kalindi, and there was Lakshmana, and there was uh, Nagnajiti, and then there was uh, also uh, Badra, and there was one more. Can't remember. Yeah. All right. Anyway, now we're going to hear how Krishna gets sixteen thousand more, sixteen thousand one hundred more wives. Uh, so the story of Bomasura uh, was told by Maharaj, uh, by Sukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Pariksit. It's told here. It tells how this Bomasura kidnapped and he kept in, in his he kept in captivity, he kept in prisoners, 16,100 16, princesses. So this Bomasura was very powerful. He would go and he would defeat different kings 
And after he defeated the kings, he would take away the young girls, the young women from his palace, from the king's palace. So Maharaj Parikshit was eager to hear about how Lord Krishna killed this demon. So Sukadeva Goswami is going to tell him the what happened. So, so Boma Sura, actually Boma was originally born, he was the son of the earth, the mother earth, Bumi. So he was not born a demon, but he became a demon by bad association. So he had become very proud. This Boma had become very proud and by force he not only took 16,100 100 princesses, he took away some valuable things from the demigods. He took away the umbrella from the throne of the demigod Varuna. And he took away the earrings, very valuable gold earrings from Aditi, the mother of the demigods. He was so powerful, he conquered the demigods and took away a portion of Mount Meru. He took away from Mount Meru, he took away the portion of Mount Meru called Mani Parvat. So Mount Meru is one of the very heavenly places where the demigods like to go to enjoy. And this Mani Parvat, it was a very beautiful place. <coughs> and the demigods liked it very much, but this Boma took it for himself. So this demon Boma was so powerful that even Indra, the king of the demigods, could not do anything about him. So this led to Indra, Lord Indra came from the heavenly planets, he came to Dwarka to complain about Boma Sura to Lord Krishna. So when Lord Krishna heard this complaint, then Lord Krishna decided he must go there and do something about it. And Krishna decided he would go on the back of Garuda and he would take along with him, he would take also his wife, Satyabhama. We may wonder when he's going to fight, he's going to have to fight a big demon like this, why would he take his wife with him? 
เลยบอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าจะสู้สู้กับมารเนี่ยทำไมจะต้องภรรยาไปด้วยก็จะ But Krishna had his reasons. We will see later on in the in the story. We will see why Krishna brought Satya Bama with him. One one reason was that this demon Bama, that he he that there was a, a he had a he had a blessing. His mother had a blessing. That her son could not be killed unless she gave permission. Uh, o n ที่มารตัวนี้เนี่ยที่ชื่อว่าโบมาได้รับอยู่เนี่ยก็คือถ้าเกิดเขาจะไม่มีการถูกสังหารถ้าว่ายังไม่ได้รับคำอนุญาตจากมารดา So Satya Bama, Satya Bama expands in the form of Mother Bumi, the god of the earth. So that's why Krishna brought Sat. One reason why Krishna brought Satya Bama, that before he would kill Bhoma, he wants Satya Bama to give him permission to say, "Go ahead, kill him." All right, and, and another reason is that after they kill this demon b o m a s h u r a then they will get back the earrings of Mother Aditi, and they can take them to heaven and give them back to her. So at that time, they can get a parijata tree, and they can bring the parijata tree from heaven. They can bring it down to Dwarka. So Satya Bama, she wanted that tree. So those are different reasons why Krishna took Satya Bama with him. So they Satya Bama and Lord Krishna got on the back of Garuda, and they went to the capital city of b o m a The capital city is called p r a g j o t i s h a p u r a So this city was a was like a fort. It was very well protected. It was very difficult to enter. First of all, there were four, there were four uh, strongholds on each of the four directions. I can hear my voice, g u r d e v You cannot. It's like echo, echo. Huh? It's echo of my voice is coming. Yes, I hear. It. I hear the echo. Yeah, it's that from from my side or from your side? It's not from my side. Must be from your side. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, I don't know. I I hear it. it's very bad. Yeah. How could it be from my side? Um. Okay, maybe my laptop got problem. Okay. Okay, we can continue. All right. So, so the demon had a very powerful army built all around the fort to protect them. And 
And then there was a water canal all around as well. And then there were electric cables also around to protect the whole city. And then they had a powerful gas, they had a, per, a, a powerful gas there which poisonous gas to stop people coming. And then there had barbed wire all around the city. So the city was really well protected. So when when Krishna what's going on? When Krishna arrived there, what is happening, Archana? Okay, okay, Gurmash. Now it's okay. When Krishna arrived there, he broke all the all the different uh, forts. He broke all the different protection systems which they had, and Krishna smashed them all with his club. And then he used his Sudarshan chakra <coughs> to cut all the electric cables. And he, he broke the hearts of all the great fighters. The, who were there to protect the city. And he broke, up, he, broke, he broke all the walls of the city. And then Krishna blew his conch shell. It was like a thunderbolt and everyone could hear it. So there was a demon named Mura who was there, and that demon, he was there to protect the demon Boma. So this demon Mura was, uh, he was very powerful. He had five heads and he could live in the water. But when Krishna blew his conch shell, it woke the demon up. And the demon came out from the water and he was all angry because he'd been woken up. So this demon's body was very brilliant, very effulgent, and you, could, you couldn't even look at him with open eyes. So this demon had a, he had a trident and he took his trident and he, he rushed towards Krishna with that trident and then he tried to attack Garuda with his trident. But Krishna 
saw the trident coming, Krishna just cut the trident into pieces. So then the demon became more angry and his five mouths all began to make sounds like a lion and he was roaring. The sound of the demon, it, it went all over the universe and trumbled through the entire universe. Everyone could hear it everywhere. So the demon threw his trident, but Krishna cut it to pieces. And then Krishna fired arrows. He fired arrows into the mouths of the demon. And then the demon really became angry. He was really roaring in pain. He was feeling the pain because his five mouths had been pierced by arrows. So then he attacked, the demon came with a big club and he tried to attack Krishna with his club, but Krishna had his club, and Krishna smashed the demon's club to pieces. So then the demon, <coughs> the demon had no more weapons, so he attacked Krishna with his fists, with his arms. He began to want to fight Krishna with his fists. So at that time Krishna just threw the Surasan Chakra and the Surasan Chakra cut off the five heads of the demon and the demon fell down dead. So the demon, this demon Mura who Krishna had killed had seven sons. So these seven sons, they were all there, they were all demons. And when they saw their father killed, they all became very angry and they all came to attack Krishna. And these seven sons, they had also their, there was somebody, there was some, one other demon called Pita, and he was a commander of the demons. So they were all attacking Krishna. And they came with, they had a lot of weapons, they had all the different weapons with them to fight in the battle. And Bomasura, Bomasura, he was telling them, you have to go now, you have to go and fight him. He killed your father. You go and attack that Krishna. He's killed your father. You should kill him. So they all came together to attack Krishna at one time. So they, they all came attacking Krishna, they were throwing weapons, all different kinds of weapons on Krishna.
they threw swords and arrows and clubs and trident. But they didn't know how powerful Krishna was. And Krishna used his arrows. He cut all of their weapons into pieces. And then Krishna threw his weapons at them and cut off all their different heads and arms and legs. So all of the sons, all the seven sons of the demon, they were all killed. And the commander, Pita, the commander of the demons, he was also killed. They were all killed by the weapons of Krishna. And so they all went to Yamaraj. So Bomasura, he has another name. Sometimes he's also called Narakasura. And he was, he was the son of the earth, the, the deity of the earth, Mother Bhumi. It said when Lord Varaha when Lord Varaha picked up the earth from the bottom of the universe, at that time he impregnated Mother Bhumi. So Boma was the son of Lord Varaha and Mother Bhumi, and he was brought up to be a devotee, but then he fell into bad association and he became a demon. But he was he was a very powerful demon. His 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 weapon, his trident could defeat Indra. Indra has a powerful weapon, but Indra couldn't defeat this Boma. So Boma saw how all of his soldiers, the demon Mura and the sons of the demon Mura and all the different soldiers had all been defeated by Krishna. So he became very angry. So Boma came out of the city it brought with him many elephants, which he had brought. He had brought these special elephants. They were all, they were white colored and they each had four tusks. And these elef the elephants were all intoxicated. So when they, they came out of the palace, they saw Lord Krishna and his wife, Satyabhama, they were situated up in the sky in outer space. They were sitting on the back of Garuda. So 
สเตบามาที่สวยงามมากประทับอยู่บนอวกาศ So Lord Krishna was like a blackish cloud beside the sun. Krishna is on the same level as Meg, Meg Sidam, close to the sun. So this demon Boma, he had a weapon. He had a special weapon to, called the Shatagni, and he could kill many people at one time. Man, Boma, yeah. มีอาวุธพิเศษชนิดหนึ่งที่ชื่อว่าชัตชักนีแล้วเขาก็สามารถใช้มันได้ในทันที So when he saw Lord Krishna he threw his weapon at Lord Krishna แล้วเมื่อเมื่อเขาเห็นพระองค์เจ้าพระเจ้าเนี่ยเขาก็ใช้อาวุธชนิดนี้กับพระองค์ And this Boma the Boma demon he brought with him many assistants And all of his assistants, they also had weapons, and they all threw their weapons against Lord Krishna. But Lord Krishna could counteract all of the weapons by releasing his arrows. แต่ว่าคริสต์านเนี่ยทรงสามารถที่จะตอบตอบโต้กับอาวุธทั้งหลายเหล่านี้ได้แค่โดยการปล่อยลูกศรคนนก And it ended up that Krishna killed all of the soldiers and all the commanders of the demon Boma. They all got their legs and heads cut off from their bodies. They all fell to the ground. และผลของมันผลของการต่อสู้ในครั้งนี้ก็คือสั่งได้ทำการสังหารพวกมาแล้วก็ขุนพลของบูมาสุระก็คือโดนตัดแขนตัดขาออกช้างมาเลย All the weapons which Boma had they were all cut to pieces by Lord Krishna's arrows แล้วก็อาวุธทั้งหมดที่โบมามีเนี่ยก็ถูกพระองค์เจ้ากริชนาตัดเป็นชิ้นชิ้น So Lord Krishna was on the back of Garuda and he was fighting against his demon And at the same time, Garuda was also fighting, and Garuda would be fighting, hitting the horses and the elephants, hitting them with his wings and scratching their heads with his nails and his beak. ก็ชาเนี่ยทรงต่อสู้อยู่บนหลังกรุดาหรือพยาครุดเนี่ยก็ช่วยพระองค์โดยการใช้ปีกเนี่ยบินไปที่ม้าแล้วก็ช้างใช้หัวแล้วก็ใช้กงเล็บเนี่ยในการ So the elephants were feeling a lot of pain because Garuda was attacking them. จะงอยปากนะวันนี้แล้วก็ตรงนี้เนี่ยทุกคนเนี่ยก็รู้สึกเจ็บเขาก็รู้สึกเจ็บปวดมากเพราะ Garuda เนี่ยก็พยายามโจมตี And they were so afraid of Garuda, they all ran away. They ran away from the battlefield and they left Momasura there. On the battlefield alone. That took the whole Nagalus of Guama for Kua Garuda, do a payak root, color wing, Nigalasutai, Golia, Boma Surania, Kondia Nesan Ambro. So Boma Sura was going to fight Lord Krishna. And he saw that Garuda had given a lot of trouble to all of his elephants and his soldiers. The God. ก็เหลือแค่บูมาสุระคนเดียวในสนามรบแล้วเขาก็เห็นว่าพาหนะของกฤษณะกรุดาเนี่ยสร้างความเดือดร้อนให้กับทหารและช้างของพวกเขามากเขาก็เลยโกรธมาก So the demon Boma he 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 tried to hit he tried to hit Garuda he had a weapon like a thunderbolt and he threw it against Garuda but Garuda is not an ordinary bird แล้วปากรามานคนนี้เนี่ยแล้วก็พยายามใช้อาวุธในการทำลายกรุดาแต่ว่ากรุดาเนี่ยไม่ใช่เป็นพยาพุทธธรรมดาทั่วไป But that weapon which hit Garuda it was just like if you hit an elephant with a garland of flowers it didn't hurt Garuda at all. ดังอาวุธที่เขาใช้เนี่ยปรากฏว่าสำหรับกรุดาแล้วเนี่ยกรุดาไม่ได้รู้สึกอะไรเลยเหมือนกับช้างที่เวลาโดนพวงมาลัย Uh, uh, 
And so Bhuma saw, Bhuma saw this, he saw none of his weapons were having any power. He became worried how he's going to defeat Krishna. But Bhuma had another trident, so he took a trident and he tried to attack Krishna. But before he could throw the trident, Krishna was too quick and Krishna cut off his head with the Surasan Chakra. <coughs> of course, it was at that time Satyabhama had told Krishna, kill him, kill him, because he's giving a lot of trouble. So when Krishna killed the demon Boma, all of the relatives of the demon, they were they all cried and they were so sorry that the demon had been killed. But the saintly persons, the devotees, they were happy when Krishna killed the demon. And the den people, the demigods in the heavenly planets, they threw flowers onto the top of Lord Krishna. So it was at this time the earth personified appears before Lord Krishna and, and she wants to offer prayers to Krishna. Now Krishna had just killed her son. But still, she has come to glorify Lord Krishna. So Mother Bhumi came to see Krishna, and she brought a she brought a nice garland, a vajai, vajai anti flower garland means a big long garland with five different kinds of flowers, different colors, five colors. And she also brought the earrings of Aditi, which Boma had stolen from Aditi. These earrings were gold and covered with many jewels. They were very valuable. And she brought also the umbrella of Varuna, which Boma had stolen. And she also gave a very valuable jewel to Lord Krishna as a present. So Mother Earth has come in front of Lord Krishna and she wants to offer prayers to Lord Krishna. So first of all she fell down and offered her obeisances and then she began to speak. So she prays to Lord Krishna, she said, let me offer my obeisances unto you. You're always present with the four symbols, namely the conch, the disc, the lotus and the club. Okay. 
ก็แสดงความพอรู้หลังจากนั้นก็บอกว่าผู้ทรงปรากฏพร้อมสัญ,ญลักษณ์ทั้งสี่คือหอยสั่งกลมจากดอกบัวและคาถา And she said, "You are the Lord of all the demigods, and you're awesome. you're the you're the Lord of all the demigods. So please accept my obeisances unto you." So, uh, Song, is the Lord of all the demigods. Ah, on the one hand, he loves Song, is the Lord of all the demigods. Ah, on the other hand, he loves Song, is the Lord of all the demigods. ความเคารพที่ข้าเนี่ยมอบให้กับพระองค์ด้วย And Mother Bumi said, "You are the super soul, and in order to satisfy the desires of your devotees, you come to the earth in your different incarnations." ว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นองค์อภิวิญญาณเพื่อสนองความปรารถนาของสาวกทรงเสด็จลงมาบนโลกด้วยลักษณะอวตารคิดต่างๆที่เหมาะสม And you appear in the different incarnations, whatever form is appropriate to the devotees who worship you. ทรงมาในอวตารที่เหมาะสมเพื่อสาวกผู้ปรารถนาที่จะบูชาพระองค์ And Mother Bumi prays to Lord. Krishna kindly accept my obeisances. And then Mother Bhumi offers a prayer, which we all may know from the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which was offered by Queen Kunti. Then, this is what we do. ตอนแรกนะเราในซีมาบอกว่าตำแหน่งมีบทมนต์ที่ถวายโดยพระนางคุณทีอยู่ It's a very beautiful prayer. We often used to sing it when we go for sankirtan. เป็นเป็นบทเพลงที่บทคำปรารถนาที่สวยสง่างามมากเวลาเราไปสังเกตการเนี่ยเราก็เราก็จะท่องกัน Namo Pankaja Nabaya, Namo Pankaja Malene, Namo Pankaja Netraya, Namaste Pankaja Graye. So this is a verse. It's very famous. It's in the first canto, chapter eight. But this prayer was first sung. It was first offered by Mother Bumi. She was offering it to Krishna here. Many years before Kunti Kunti sang it to Krishna. บทมนต์นี้เนี่ยเป็นบทมนต์ที่ก่อนที่พระนางคุณจีเนี่ยจะมาจะมาจะใช้ในการปรารถนาต่อคริสต์นาเนี่ยเป็นบทมนต์เดียวกันที่พระแม่บูมีเนี่ยได้ใช้ในการถวายคริสต์นามาก่อน So Queen Kunti must have learned the prayer from Mother Bumi. พระนางคุณจีเนี่ยก็เรียนรู้บทมนต์นี้เนี่ยจาก Uh, so the prayer tells us that the lotus flower comes out of the navel of the Lord. And the Lord is always decorated with a, a garland of lotus flowers. And the lo the eyes of the Lord are like a lotus flower. So you're very pleasing to the eyes of everyone. And your your lotus feet are very soft and delicate. And your lotus feet are always worshipped by your pure devotees. And the lotus, the lotus feet of the Lord purify the lotus hearts of the devotees. กับลูกดอกบัวของสาวกของเราเนี่ยพึงพอใจ
So Mother Bhumi says, I offer my obeisances again and again unto you. There, there are two verses actually, but the, uh, Queen Kunti says two verses, but this one verse, this is from the Mother Earth speaking to Krishna. Hundred, many years before, before uh, Queen Kunti would offer prayers to Krishna. So Mother Earth says to Krishna that you possess all the opulence, you possess all beauty, strength, fame, knowledge, uh, wealth and renunciation. And you are the shelter of all opulences. And you are all pervading. And you have come as the son of Vasudev. So please accept my obeisances. And you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are the cause of all causes. And you are the reservoir of all knowledge. I offer my obeisances unto you. You are unborn, but you are the father of the whole cosmic manifestation. And you are the reservoir and shelter of all kinds of energies. And the, the world, this whole material world is all caused by you. You are the cause and you are the effect of the, this world, this cosmic world, material world. Please accept my obeisances. And the three gods, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, they are also not independent of you. When, when you want to create, then you appear as Lord Brahma. And when you want to maintain the material world, you expand yourself as Lord Vishnu. And when it's time to dissolve the whole creation, you appear as Lord Shiva. So you always maintain your transcendental position in spite of creating the modes of nature. And you're never entangled in the modes of nature like the ordinary living entities. And 
And Bhumi says to Lord Krishna, she said, actually, you are the material nature. You are the father of the universe. And you are eternal time, which caused the creation, the, which caused the combination of the elements of nature and the material world to manifest. But you are always transcendental to all these material activities. <coughs> and then Mother Earth, she lists all the different elements of the material nature and she said everything, animate and inanimate, it, it all rests upon you. Everything is produced of you. Nothing is separate from you. So we cannot identify anything material. We cannot identify anything material with your personality. Everything is one with you, but at the same time different from you. And any philosopher who tries to separate everything from you, then they make a great mistake. And then Mother Earth says that she wants to introduce her grandson to Lord Krishna. She said, this boy, his name is Bhagadatta, and he is the son of my son Bhomasura. So the, 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 poor, the poor boy, young boy, Bhagadatta, he was very disturbed because he saw the, the death of his father and all the other people who were there who were supposed to be the friends of his father, like the demon Mura and the demon Mura's seven sons and so many soldiers, they'd all been killed by Krishna. So the boy was, the young boy was confused and afraid because he'd seen so much killing, so much fighting. So Mother, Mother Earth said to Lord Krishna, said, I brought him to surrender unto your lotus feet. And I want you to give shelter to this boy and bless him, place your lotus hand on his hand. On his head. And Mother said, I'm bringing him to you so he can get free of all the bad karma which he's got from his, the sinful activities of his father. And Mother said, I'm bringing him to you so he can get free of all the bad karma which he's got from his, the sinful activities of his father. 
ได้รับการปลดเปลื้องจากผลบาปทั้งปวงที่บิดาได้ทำไว้ So Mother Earth understood her son who Lord Krishna killed was very sinful พระแม่ธรณีเนี่ยมีความเข้าใจเป็นอย่างดีว่าลูกของตนที่โดนสังหารไปเนี่ยเป็นมารที่ชั่วร้ายมากมาก So when Lord Krishna heard the prayers of Mother Earth Lord Krishna was very happy หลังจากที่กระชาทรงได้ยินบทมนต์จากพระมารดาแล้วเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงมีความพึงพอพระทัยเป็นอย่างมาก So he promised Mother Bumi that she didn't have to be afraid, and he promised also that he would not harm the son, the grandson. แล้วก็ทรงให้ความมั่นใจกับพระนางแล้วก็บอกว่าทุกอย่างเนี่ยจะปลอดภัยแล้วก็สถานการณ์มันจะไม่น่ากลัวแล้วแล้วก็จะให้ที่พึ่งสำหรับบากาดันจ่าด้วยแอนลูกของเขาด้วยลางของเขา Yeah, Lord Krishna tells the demon Bhagadatta, "You don't have to be afraid." So then Krishna entered the palace of Bhomasura, and he saw inside the palace that was very opulent. After that, the Lord went into the palace of Bhomasura. ซึ่งมันมีความมั่งคั่งนานับประการ So Lord Krishna saw in the palace that there were 16,100 young women there who were being kept prisoners และพระชาเนี่ยก็จะทรงพบกับเจ้าหญิงทั้งหมดหนึ่งเอ่อหนึ่งมื่นหกพันหนึ่งร้อยองค์ที่ถูกเอ่อมาตัวนี้เนี่ยลักพาตัวมากักขังไว้ So when all the princesses saw Krishna enter the palace, they all immediately became attracted by the beauty of Krishna, and they prayed for his mercy. หลังจากที่เจ้าหญิงเหล่านี้เนี่ยเห็นคริชนาเข้ามาในวังเนี่ยพวกนางก็จะลงลายกับสเสน่ห์แห่งความสง่างามทันทีแล้วพวกเขาก็จะปรารถนาขอพระเมตตาจากพระองค์ And they all decided to accept Krishna as their husband. They all, they all prayed that Krishna would become their husband. And they offered their hearts to the lotus feet of Krishna with unalloyed devotional love. แล้วพวกเขาเนี่ยก็ถวายหัวใจและความจริงใจของเขาเนี่ยให้กับคริชนาที่พระบาทรูปดอกบัวของพระองค์ด้วยการพิจตนเสียสาลับใช้ที่บริสุทธิ์ So Krishna is the super soul in everyone's heart, so he could understand their desire, and he agreed to accept them as his wives. ในฐานะที่คริชนาเนี่ยทรงเป็นองค์อภิวิญญาณประทับอยู่ในหัวใจของทุกสิ่งมีชีวิตพิชนาจะก็ทรงเข้าใจความปรารถนาอันไรมนคินของพวกเขา So Krishna arranged to get suitable garments and ornaments and jewelry for each of the ladies และพิชนาเนี่ยก็ได้ทำการจัดหาเสื้อผ้าอาภรณ์และเครื่องประดับที่เหมาะสมให้กับทุกคน And then they arranged palanquins, and all the girls, all these young sixteen thousand one hundred young ladies, they were all sent to Dwarka. And Krishna then collected all the a lot of wealth from the palace, which the demon Bhomasura had there. He collected a lot of wealth, and like chariots and horses and jewels, and he sent that to Dwarka also. The Krishna ne ko sum rup rum sab sum bad mag mai thi mi jag rajawang nan rum thang rajarod ma anjamani, and ka sab sin ngan thong mag mai ne, and ka ao cha ha sip tua ne ma jag wang, and ka ao den ha. And he took. He he got also fifty white elephants. Each of the elephants had four tusks, so he took all of them and sent them to Dwarka. 
แล้วก็ทรงนําเอาช้างเผือกห้าสิบตัวเนี่ยมาจากวังแล้วก็แต่ละตัวเนี่ยก็มีสี่งาแล้วก็ได้ส่งตัวไปที่ดวาระกะ Okay, so we'll stop there. Uh, actually, we should explain that there are six, 16,100 queens for Krishna. Uh, Krishna is like the moon, and all of these queens, they're just like. Parts of the moon. The moon divides into sixteen different parts. In the course of the movement of the moon, every day is like sixty, and you get a new moon after sixteen days. Ah, uh, ตรงนี้เนี่ย Krishna เนี่ยก็เปรียบเสมือนกับพระจันทร์แล้วความจริงแล้วการเดินทางของพระจันทร์เนี่ยจะแบ่งออกเป็นสิบหก And each of the sixteen parts is divided into one thousand parts. And each of the sixteen parts is divided into one thousand parts. And each of the sixteen parts is divided into one thousand parts. So that's why you got sixteen thousand queens for Krishna. ก็เลยทำให้มีนางมหสีทั้งหมดหนึ่งมืนหกพันนาง They're the energy. They're the energy of Krishna. พวกนางเนี่ยเป็นพลังของคริสต์เนอโอเค Are there any questions? จะจบคำปัญญาไปเรียนแค่นี้นะคะ No questions today, yeah. Um, I don't know. Chinese do. Chinese devotee, ask any question. I can't see anybody raised there. Oh, Shaya, Madam. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for your name. Please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glory to Sri Lanka Bhupan. Um, I just have a question. Why do many things that we hear, like the demigods or the children of the demigods, have changed their nature? เปลี่ยนเป็นมารซะเองแบบในเรื่องเนี้ยปูมาสุราก็เป็นลูกของบูเทวีใช่ไหมคะอยากให้ครูมหาราชอธิบายเรื่องนี้ให้ฟังหน่อยค่ะได้ค่ะได้ขอบคุณค่ะขอบคุณค่ะ her her question is many time uh we can heard that some the demi god the son of the demi god itself they will turn into a demon why does it happen like that and even in the this story also say Yes, I said because bad association. If they lose the association of devotees, if you go into association with demons, and you become like a demon, you take the qualities of the people you associate with. สาเหตุก็มาจากเนื่องมาจากว่าการคบหาสมาคมที่แย่เพราะว่าเขาไปคบหาสมาคมกับมารก็เลยทำให้เป็นมาร If you associate. With people who are not devotees, just like if you associate with people who are drunkards, you will become a drunkard. เหมือนกับถ้าเราเนี่ยเขาผ่านสมาคมกับบุคคลที่ไม่ใช่สาวกหรือว่าบุคคลที่ดื่มสิ่งของมึนเมาเนี่ยเราก็จะกลายเป็นคนขี้เมาไปเลยวัน And if you associate with people who are not devotees, you will also lose your devotion. แล้วถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยก็ผ่านสมาคมกับบุคคลที่ไม่ใช่สาวกวันหนึ่งเนี่ยเราก็จะกลับกลายเป็นคนที่ไม่มีการอุทิศตนเสียสารับใช้หรือไม่เป็นสาวก Association is very very important การคบหาสมาคมเนี่ยมีความสำคัญมากมาก So even though you may be born in a good family as a demigod 
You can easily become the demon if you don't take advantage of the association. We say birds of a feather flock together. You see the birds, the birds, you know, the swans, they're with swans, and the crows, they're with the crows. So the demons, they're fun to eat meat and to drink and to do bad things. But devotees are very careful what they eat and where they go and who will, who they mix with. Okay, any other question? Krishna? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, Sati. Uh, uh, Yodafunsenjo,会雕刻,言是的,神,茶卡的那个,像,还有,还有,雕刻,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,还有,
Now some people they do like to write the holy name when you use, when we put tilak on the body you can also write the holy name on your body. You can get a kind of a stamp which you you know you put the tail like on the stamp and then you stamp the put the stamp on your skin and it will leave the mark of the holy name on your body. Mm. So putting tea like on our body is like an armor, protects us, and we wear the kunti mala, put the neck beads around our neck. That 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 is how we actually protect our body. And of course, writing the holy name on our body with tea like that is also very good. So those are the authorized ways. I don't know about earrings, having earrings, Hare Krishna earrings. I don't know about that. You have to, I have to see what Krishna thinks of that. It may help you. It may help you. It may be protect. But best thing is the neck beads, tosi neck beads, and tea like. Uh, and we don't just put tilak only on the face, on, not only on the forehead, you have to put it on all the temples around the body. Mm -mm. I think, it, how many temples is it? Twelve temples. So these are authorized, but putting on putting Hare Krishna earrings that's your own that's your own desire. It, it may be appreciated by Krishna. I don't I don't know what the Yamaduras would think if the Yamaduras will know to keep away from you or not. You still have to have neck beads. You still should have tosi around your neck. Very important. Okay. How you want to study? Ah, Shiva. Next one is Radhika Hare Krishna Maharaj opens uh, obeisance to your lotus feet. Uh, Be Krishna, Sasuke, Lopo, you the to the Lingxing world, uh, like Bhutana. Then you have the uh, rung to the Krishna the free the Jetwa. Why? 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 这个被 Krishna Sasu之后 去见了Yamaraja 请您解释感谢您还是Krishna why was it mentioned today that the demons killed by Krishna went to Yamaloka? Yeah. 
I also wondered that myself, I don't know. <laughs> I thought about this question myself today when I was reading the book. Uh, it could be that they go to Yamaloka first and then Yamaraj will consider, well, they were killed in front of Krishna, so they're benefited. So from Yamaloka they, they'll be sent to Vaikuntha. But uh, I don't know. Uh, that's my speculation. I don't know about this. But gen generally, yeah, it's true. We do say. But anybody get killed in the presence of Krishna, then they get liberation. I will have to check in the tenth canto Srimad Bhagavatam. I will check in the tenth canto Srimad Bhagavatam and see how it's described there in the Sanskrit. To, or it may just be Prabhupada just wrote like that when he was writing the, the, the Krishna book, but it may be different in the Bhagavatam. Yeah, I'll have a look and, and, and see what it says there in the Bhagavatam. <laughs> uh, go ahead, is there any other question? Mm. Fei Feng Shenzhe died Jinju. Oh. So the, the non-devotees, non-devotees, if they put on Tosi beads, did that, does that benefit them? Well, <clears throat> They're not really qualified to wear the Tosi. If they're not following regulative principles, if they eat meat and if they do all sinful habits, they're not chanting the holy name, they're not really qualified to wear Tosi. It's, un it's unlikely that they can be protected. You know, can they save themselves from going to hell just by having Tosi beads around their neck? Mm. <laughs> it's. It's, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to save them. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not very easy to keep the Tosi beads around their neck unless they're devotees. Well, I remember one time there was a family, the person, somebody in the family was dying and they came and they got some Tosi beads to put around the neck of the dying person. But just before they left the body, they ripped off the Tosi beads. They couldn't keep them around their neck. <laughs> So you cannot cheat Krishna. Mm. So we should be very <laughs> 
you know, you're, you're really taking a chance to think you can just put tosi around your beads, around your neck, that would save you from going to hell. You, you have to be worthy of wearing tosi around your neck. <laughs> yes, well, just like chanting the holy name, you know, chanting the holy name, there's offensive chanting of the holy name and pure chanting of the holy name. So, is it an offence? Is it an offence to wear tosi if somebody is not a devotee? <laughs> well, certainly we don't in, we don't in, uh, give it out freely to people to put around their necks. If people want to purchase toe seat beads and wear them around the neck, then we allow them to do that. Then we allow them to give some money, they buy something, they buy some beads from the devotees, okay, so they're giving some money, they're doing some service for Krishna. So that's the benefit which they're doing. They're, they're giving some money which is being used in the service of Krishna. But as far as actually getting spiritual benefit from putting Tosi around the neck, it's unlikely unless they actually understand the value of the Tosi and understand what Tosi actually is, what the sacred wood is, then it's just simply, you know, there's no benefit. <laughs> so I checked the verse about the going to Yamaraj. It's actually there in the in the Sanskrit. It says Yama, the Lord of Death. He sent them to Yama, the Lord of Death. It's there. In, the, in chapter 59, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, verse number 14. So it actually does mention there, Yamaraj. He sent them to Yamar, the Lord of Death. <laughs> So uh, I don't I don't know if they if they actually get delivered. You know they're killed by Krishna. Certainly they're killed by Krishna, so their karma is ended. They'll get a better birth. They'll go to a, at least maybe they'll go to a higher place, or maybe they will even get liberation. But, you know, people wearing Tosi around their neck, is it going to save them from going to hell if they're not devotees? You have to do more than that. You have to do more than just put Tosi around your neck.
But it certainly will help them, will help some pious some piety there, some pious activity there. Yeah. We get the benefit of our pious activity and, and we suffer for our sins. So they put Tosi around their neck. Maybe they, they don't put it around with full devotion, but at least they have some respect for Tosi, material respect. And it helps to remind people Krishna. Okay, yeah. Any other question, Sati? No, 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 Okay. no, 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 Jai, Gurmash ki, Jai. Gurmash ki, Jai. Jai.